Hello and welcome to my next video on DNA technologies. So, genomics. Genomics is the study of the whole set of genetic material in the form of DNA-based sequences that occur in the cells of organisms of particular species. We have many uses for this. We can look at DNA profiling, which is used in forensic crime science analysis and paternity and maternity testing. Genomic sequencing which is used in research into the function of genes and regulatory DNA sequences. Genetic engineering, used in the production of pharmaceutical chemicals, genetically modified organisms, and xenotransplantation. And the prospect of gene therapy to treat conditions such as cystic fibrosis. Um, for those who don't know, xenotransplantation is um, kind of... Xeno is like alien, so it means cross species. Now... In this video, we're looking at the first two, profiling and sequencing. In the next video, we'll look at genetic engineering and gene therapy. Sequencing. So firstly, we're going to look at the very basic outline of sequencing. Now, this reaction can only operate on a length of DNA of up to about 750 base pairs. This means that the genome must be broken up and sequenced in sections in order to ensure that the assembled code is accurate Sequencing is carried out a number of times on overlapping fragments, with the overlapping regions analysed and put back together to form the completed code. So let's say you have a section, you're doing the alphabet and you have section A to E, you then also have a section which is perhaps C to G, you have another one which is E to H, like that, so you kind of have them overlapping. Right. Firstly, genomes are mapped to identify which part of the genome they come from. Now we already know this, so we use the location of microsatellites, which are short runs of repetitive sequences of three to four base pairs found in several thousand locations on the genome. So basically we just work out where on the genome we are. So we know, let's say we're on, you know, chromosome three right at the beginning. Samples of the genome are sheared, that's mechanically broken into smaller sections of around 100,000 base pairs each. This is sometimes referred to as a shotgun approach. And these sections are placed into separate bacterial artificial chromosomes, or BACs, and transferred to E. coli cells. This means they can be um, replicated and put into clone libraries. In order to sequence a BAC section, um, cells containing specific BACs are taken and cultured. The DNA is extracted from the cells and restriction enzymes used to cut into smaller fragments. The use of different restriction enzymes on a number of samples gives different fragment types. Now we'll look at restriction enzymes in the next video, but essentially they have a very specific shape they can cut into of a certain number of bases. So if you use loads of different restriction enzymes, you get loads of different kind of bases being cut into. So in one you might have AAG, the other might be TGA, like that. The fragments are separated uses, using a process known as electrophoresis, which we'll look at. Each fragment is sequenced using an automated process, which we'll also look at, and computer programs then compare overlapping regions from the cuts made by different restriction enzymes in order to reassemble the whole back segment sequence. So, electrophoresis. Now, this m section is just basically learning about different techniques which are used in sequencing DNA. Now, firstly, electrophoresis is very similar to chromatography for anyone who knows that. Because what it does, it separates DNA fragments based on their size. Now, you use a gel plate or slab containing agarose, which is a sugar, and it's covered in buffer solution to make sure the pH remains constant. Electrodes are attached to each end of the gel, so you have a current can be pass passing through it. So one's positive and one's negative. Um, now, just to let you know, the cathode is the negative and the anode is the positive. Um, then you get the DNA samples and treat them with restriction enzymes to cut them into the fragments like we just talked about. The DNA samples are placed into wells cut into the negative electrode end of the gel. The gel is immersed in a tank of buffer solution and an electric current is passed through the solution for a fixed period of time, usually around two hours. Now DNA is negatively charged because of the phosphate groups have a negative charge to them. So it's attracted to the positive end. So the DNA fragments diffuse through the gel towards the positive electrode end. And shorter lengths of DNA move faster. And it's because longer strands of DNA get caught up in the agarose gel and are slowed. So the position of the fragments can be shown using a dye that stains DNA molecules. So this way you can get a kind of run of the different DNA fragments because each 
length, even by one base, will still move at a slightly different speed. Now, you can then lift these uh, fragments from the gel for further analysis. And this is called blotting, or southern blotting, named after Edward Southern, Edwin Southern. And you use not, we look at this a little bit more later, but a nylon sheet is placed over the gel, covered in paper towels, pressed and left overnight, and the DNA fragments are transferred to the sheet and can be analysed, and we'll look at how they're analysed later. Now, DNA probes. A DNA probe is a short, single-stranded piece of DNA, around 50 to 80 nucleotides long, that is complementary to a section of the DNA being investigated. And the probe is labelled in two ways. Now, it can usually be done with a P32 marker, that's a radioactive isotope of phosphate. So that on DNA you have a phosphate group. You have the phosphate, the sugar, and the nucleotide base. And um, if you just change the phosphate to a 32, you can detect it because it's radioactive. And it can be revealed in exposure to photographic film. Or you can use a fluorescent marker that emits a colour on exposure to UV light. And this is usually used in automated DNA sequencing. Now, the important thing is that it's single-stranded, which means that they can be added to any sample of the DNA. They will bind to a fragment where it's complement complementary base sequence and this is called annealing so basically binding together probes are useful in locating specific sequences such as to locate a desired gene or to identify the same gene on a variety of different genomes now the example of fluorescent labeled probes we're going to look at um, the um, actually we're going to look at fluorescent again later in the automated but here's another example so a sample of DNA is digested into fragments using restriction enzymes and separated using electrophoresis, as we said earlier. The separated DNA fragments are then transferred to a nylon membrane, as we said, and then they are you add the, fluorescent, the fluorescently labelled DNA probe. If the target sequence is present, the DNA probe will hybridise, also known as binding to it. The membrane is then exposed to UV light, and if the target sequence is present, there will be a fluorescent band. So what you could do is you could have loads of different samples of the genome, have all have all these probes added, so the same probe but added to all of them, and see under UV light which one is shows colour, so you know where which section is present there. Now the polymerase chain reaction. Now this is basically artificial DNA replication. And it's because if you want to replicate a DNA sample a lot, so if there's in forensic investigations, they use it to get more samples because you don't want just one, one experiment on one sample. You want, to, in case you know there's a mistake, or you want to do it again. Now, this is the sequencing reaction relies on the fact that DNA is made up of an anti-parallel backbone strand, and the strands have a five prime end and a three prime end, and DNA grows from the three prime end and the base pairing rules. Now, why PCR isn't identical to natural DNA replication is because it can only replicate relatively short sequences of DNA, not entire chromosomes. The addition of primer molecules is required in order for the process to start, and we'll see why. And a cycle of heating and cooling is used in PCR to separate and bind strands. We do not have that in our body, otherwise we'll you know, boil or freeze. Now, what actually happens? So firstly, you want to heat, you have a double-stranded DNA, sample and you heat it to 95 degrees to break the hydrogen bonds now you've then got two single stranded samples and in normal dna replication you have a template strand and the other is just you know not used this both of them act as a template strand now short lengths of single stranded dna called primers are added and they're added to the three prime end the temperature is reduced to around 55 degrees, allowing the primers to bind by hydrogen bonding and form small sections of double-stranded DNA. Now, why we have this is so that DNA polymerase can bind to them. The temperature is raised to 72 degrees, which is the optimum temperature for DNA polymerase. Now, you might think, you know, well, our body's not 72 degrees for that. Well, you have to remember that all the enzymes in our body have a different optimum. We cannot have the optimum for each one in there. So we have a balanced optimum of the whole body, which means that all the enzymes will survive. So what this just means is that 
DNA polymerase in the body will not work at 100% efficiency, but it'll still work very well at body temperature. Now, the enzyme extends the double-stranded section by adding free nucleotides to the unwound DNA. So, just like normal DNA reaction, the polymerase goes DNA polymerase goes wrong along the DNA strand after you've got the um, primer added, and starts adding free nucleotides. When a DNA polymerase reaches the other end of the DNA strand, a new double-stranded DNA molecule is made. The whole process can be done as many times as you want to get 2, 4, 8, 16. Now, a lot of this stuff is actually a lot more complicated than, I'm um, sorry, a lot of stuff looks more complicated than it actually is. So I'm hoping I'm making it quite simple. It's just learning the steps. Automated DNA sequencing. Now, the first thing to know is that we have these um, modified nucleotides, which will have a kind of label attached to them. Now, this can either be the fluorescent marker or a um, radioactive isotope of phosphate, which means that these can be detected, these certain bases. And when these bases are added to a sequence of DNA, it stops it being replicated past that point. And you'll see why that's important. So firstly, you join a primer to the three prime end of the template strand, allowing DNA polymerase to attach. DNA polymerase adds free nucleotides according to the base pairing rules and strand gr grows, so it's exactly the same as DNA replication and uh, the polymerase chain reaction. Now, there are modified nucleotides which have these, you know, detectors floating around, and they can add to, they can be, you know, annealed to any single one of the bases as long as it's complementary. And if it is added, the polymerase enzyme is thrown off and the reaction stops on that template strand. Now, what you do is you have literally thousands of different template strands well it's the same template strand but then every so often a base will add and if you get one of these radioactive bases adding to anywhere on the chain it stops now if you have a thousand chains it means there's a possibility and it does end up happening that these radioactives can end up on each strand binding to a different base so you could get, you know, you could get a radioactive one binding to the first open base after the primer. You could get one binding to the last one on that DNA sequence. And once you've got that, you have different length DNA molecules. And then you run it through a machine, which will detect the different colours. So each of these markers will have a different kind of colour associated. In the book, they've used... Uh, Red is T, blue is G, yellow is A, and green is C. And it basically means you get a graph which will show the different colours. So you can, if you see, for example, um, red, red, blue, yellow, you know the sequence at that point of what you've got is, let's say, red, red, blue, yellow, so T, T, G, A. And you work out the complementary base pairings to that as well. Now, that's essentially it. So you basically just have these radioactive or fluorescent markers which bind to any point on the sequence which stops DNA polymerase up to there, which means you'll get kind of different length DNA to sample them and see what the order of colours come up in. So that makes sense. Now we can compare genomes. Now for the exam you don't really need to know a huge amount about these, but just know you can like you can compare using something called comparative gene mapping and uh, this is uh, knowing the sequence of bases in a gene of an organism and being able to compare genes for the same proteins across a range of organisms and you can tell like evolutionary relationships and compare genes which ones they have and which they don't so you can see yeah so it's kind of a, a way of doing like um fire genetics and things like that and you can compare between different species seeing how closely related they are and compare within the same species like so we can help us trace early human migration where different groups of early humans separated and moved off because they'll have slightly different genes you don't need to know much about this the book says you just need to be able to compare data when you get when you're given it about this so that is that. I hope this makes sense because I know a few of you asked for this because you said it found it quite confusing. It It is confusing when you look at it, but if you've taught it well, which I hope I've done, it does start to make a lot more sense. So you need to know about four main processes. Sequencing, 
which is kind of the basic outline. Electrophoresis, which is like chromatography, and it's kind of for separating sections of DNA. PCR, which is for replicating DNA artificially. An automated DNA sequence, which is getting every single base in the code. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and goodbye.